Hey everyone, I've got so a So does very... it fuck you up if I talk in the middle of your introduction? <laughs> Hey everyone, I've got a very exciting video for you today. It's my first ever interview and my first guest is one heck of a guest. I have to check my notes because this introduction is so long. So my sure. guest today is a Colorado native, a comedian, podcast host, a recent graduate in climate science from Columbia University, a billiards superstar, Al Gore impersonator, and he has an incredible and hilarious YouTube channel called Climate Town, which you need to check out after this interview. Ladies and gentlemen, Raleigh Williams. Hey, listeners and watchers. <laughs> this is, I, I, I'm just now, it's dawning on me, this is a video and not just a, a, a podcast. A po so, yeah, right. This is cool. Two forms of uh, communication. Just right. see that in front of this. I wouldn't call myself a billiard superstar by any stretch. Mm. Uh, I am a billiards enthusiast and I have a lot, I've made a lot of billiards content. You have a really successful billiards YouTube channel and you've been on yeah. the front page of some billiards magazines. One one billiards magazine, yeah. But I, I think it's also important to note that billiards has a pretty well-established uh, metric system for who is good and bad. And I okay. am solidly in the middle. So you're a billiards personality, but skill level wise, like on the pro circuit, you're like mid-level, you think? Mid-level on the pro circuit would be unbelievable. Imagine for a moment, every singer in the world is stacked up against each other. Right. And that's like the field. I'm Ryan Seacrest. Okay. Okay. I, I don't do. actually know if Ryan Seacrest can sing or not, but he is not cracking the top 50%. <laughs> right. Gotcha. I, got a call. I hope it's spam. I'm sure it is. Spam. If it's spam, you need to take it. If it's spam, if it's spam, I gotta take it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's. I, yeah, it was. It was from. It was from L.A. I get calls from Hawaii and all sorts. I don't know anybody in Hawaii. Rock That's Obama's true. There. That's true. That's you true. know him. Check Dwayne me. Johnson is half from there, right? Is he I from mean, there? You're not half from anywhere. You're not half from any right. <laughs> <laughs> he just spanned. He reached over across the. Is yeah. he Hawaiian? I thought that he was half Hawaiian, half black. I'm not. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not really sure. I genuinely. I, when I say he's from somewhere, I mean literally they were born. Right. There, so I'm not really sure where Dwayne Johnson, D Dwayne the Dwayne Pebble the Johnson. Johnson. Born. Well, that's what the whole point of this interview is. We're gonna find that out. Because we're not gonna look anything up. We're just wow. gonna find out where he's from. What a fundamentally insane podcast concept. <laughs> right. although like you never know that i guess that could kind of pop off i first found out about you through your youtube channel climate town but then whenever i first uh, reached out to you it's because i saw that you graduated from columbia university with a degree in climate science correct yeah climate science and policy and policy okay yeah and so i had the idea that i was going to do a video about uh the different kinds of degrees that you can get related to climate climate change and um, you know maybe put a video out there to help people help like high school kids that care about climate change look at what they can do in college and all that kind of stuff and then I saw that you graduated from there and so we'll get into all that in a minute but I thought I would be remiss if I didn't interview the man himself because you're so interesting you got so many hats that you wear so many different things that you're doing you're a Colorado native so talk to me about what that was like growing up in Colorado, because I grew up in Illinois in corn country, the flattest place on planet earth. And it sounds to me like you grew up on a mountain in Colorado. This is going to be a big reveal, I guess. Also, when you, when you ask like, like I saw your Colorado native, talk to me about that. What does that mean? Cause <laughs> just as a continuation of not understanding what the concept of coming from somewhere is. <laughs> You're half from Colorado. Yeah, so Where's uh, your other half from? Is the other half in a mountain? Yeah. So check this out. I was born. I'm not a Colorado native. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I think I maybe say I'm a Colorado native somewhere, but it, it's, uh, it's, uh, I was born in Illinois. Of all places. You were? Okay, so I've oh, screwed yeah. this up royally. No, no, no. I think I've misled you. There's there's okay. false information online. I just keep so I was born in Illinois, but I, I yeah, I my family moved to Colorado when I was like half of a year old. Okay, okay. Um gotcha. where were you born so, in Illinois? Rolling Meadows. Is that north, like near Chicago? It's a little north. Yeah, it's like Des Plaines. It's like the okay. main township kind of area. Yeah. All of my my memories are recorded from Colorado. I don't remember a lick of growing up 
in okay. Illinois. But Colorado was delightful, you know, like I really I feel like I I a little bit uh, embody whatever the stereotype of a Colorado that people think of. I I worked at a summer camp for eight years, like I ski and hike and I was a boy right. scout for the longest time and got a lot of sunburns growing up. That's yeah. what I was going to ask is, did your experience- How's your skin? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. How's your skin doing? That was my yeah. main- <laughs> Probably not good. <laughs> I was going to ask if that shaped your, you know, caring about the planet and, and climate change and all that, if your experience being in such an amazing state like Colorado and being outdoors all the time, if that's really what shaped your care of, you know, the outside world, nature and all that kind of stuff, or if it's just, you know, innate in who you are. Yeah. I mean, it would be a nice narrative if it was because I like, you know, saw an eagle eat a fish <laughs> while I was playing guitar at sunset or something. Yeah. And I'm like, this world is worth saving, you know, like I'm <laughs> Sam, What's his name? Sam Neal? Sam Elliott. I, I, I walked oh, down to Fort. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, never, uh, that's too that's too far. You also sound like someone from the Sopranos when you do that. Uh, I'm gonna make you an offer you can't understand. <laughs> no, I, I it didn't come from that. My love of the environment truly was born of the comedic irony that we live on a planet we're currently destroying. Oh okay. and, and not even destroying. We're like just making it unlivable for ourselves. Like that is, I, I I got to climate change through a comedy show I was doing that was like nominally about climate change. Okay. Well, are you talking about an, an inconvenient talk show? Yeah. And in yeah. fact, I'm even I'm even talking about before it was an inconvenient talk show. It was called an inconvenient truth to listen up, you fugly dipshits. <laughs> that was the premise of the show, and it was like a, a strung out Al Gore who was like. I fucking told you so, you know, like that was the premise. And then it kind of morphed into a talk show, but it was always a comedy show. Like yeah. I didn't really, I think I knew about climate change just like everybody else had heard about it. And I, you know, I studied it a little bit, but really not much. I, I went to, I went to college for biochemistry. Oh, okay. And not at all, like, you know, extremely tenuously related to atmospheric right. chemistry but not much at all wildly my advisor was literally an atmospheric chemist but i never oh, really? did any atmospheric chemistry with him it, you know it's nuts it, it makes no sense but right. um yeah so i got into it because i was researching for this comedy show that i had had you know i was bringing on comedians from like the tonight show and yeah. snl and late late night with seth myers and colbert None of those actual guys, but people on the shows and, and actors and writers and stuff. And then also part of the show, I, I was playing Al Gore. And so I would like invite on a climate scientist and interview the climate scientist. And then after like, you know, eight months of shows, it just became so clear to me that climate change needed my full attention. Right. And that I could, I could keep like, you know, trimming around the edges, but... I didn't, I wasn't doing anything. What the fuck am I doing? I'm just yeah. like a, playing billiards and <laughs> making videos and doing yeah. comedy. Like I, I had the time. And so I pivoted to grad school to climate right. science. It's, it's easy to tell people like give up your shit and change your life and do this thing. But if you do it yourself, it's a lot easier to like convince people to, to change themselves in certain ways. So right. I felt like I should, uh, uh, walk the walk before I yeah. talk the talk. Yeah, I checked some of that out and it's hilarious. Um, Thanks, man. Yeah, you got the wig and the, yeah, the the accent and, and all that. Yeah. It's, and it's not good. I don't do a good impression of Al Gore. <laughs> it's hard to do an Al Gore impression, you know? I, I mean, Are you in a spooky Victorian mansion? Yes. What the hell is going on behind you? <laughs> Actually, I Gold am. Yeah. A, ghost, a ghost of like a Civil War veteran right. popped up in that mirror. Long story short, we have no air conditioning, like I said. And where I had my whole setup was up in my finished attic. So it's mm. three stories up and it ah. is like an oven up there. And heat travels down, right? What's the deal? No. Yeah. No. It goes this way. So you have a uh, YouTube channel called Climate Town or a YouTube series at least called Climate Town. And it's amazing. And I that's how I found you in the first place was through that because I started my climate change channel in October and of last year. And uh, I had the idea to bring, you know, comedy to it because I was like, there's too many people 
you know, kind of screaming about it and, and you can, it kind of automatically turns your brain off, you know, if you hear that too much and comedy is such a great communicator and it's really important in my life. I, I, I can't make it through a day without trying to find some way to laugh. So I'm, it's really cool that you've married your love of comedy and climate into climate town. And it's uh, your videos are a mix of they they're incredibly informational. And I don't know where, I don't even know how you pull these clips up or these, uh, you'll find these old like audio clips and these old videos. I don't even know where you get those from. Th those are incredible. And then the videos also piss you off because of the content. And then they also make you laugh really hard. You had a video called Plastic Recycling is an Actual Scam. And then that blew up. It was on the front page of Reddit. And then you went from, you know, I think you had, I don't know, like 5,000 subscribers or something like that. And now you have like over 50, you have like 55,000 subscribers. So what was that like? Uh, it, it was awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. it was great. I, it was late December, I think. And I was like on a phone with somebody on the, on a phone. What am I? Old Victorian. Hold phone. on to the phone, my dude. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was like talking to my buddy Asa. And I got a couple texts in a row and I was like, from people I hadn't spoken to in a long time, that's usually a good sign that like, or a bad sign. <laughs> yeah. Or a terrible sign. Like, are, are you on the news for accidentally, like, you know, starting a fire or something? No, but you know, like a bunch of people are like, Hey, you're on the front page of Reddit. And that's great. You know, like that's gonna, that's always a lot of views. And uh, so, yeah, it just a ton of people. I think it's just like, was, was the kind of video that, felt like a smoking gun and it it felt like uh you know it was like kind of a hot um take on recycling and right and i yeah i think it it just happened to catch a wave yeah. I, I think that's the thing like it's it, it, if one russian kid didn't post that video at that exact time <laughs> yeah. i would have the same amount of subscribers as i always had you know it was just it just happened to work out that like one video and i and i like put a ton of work into that video oh, for yeah, sure but you I, can tell yeah but i but i also like put a ton of work into almost every video that i do and it, like they, those don't pop off maybe a couple have popped off sort of similarly but yeah, like that in that moment was you was, you know, just every time I refreshed, it was another like thousand subscribers, which yeah. is kind of cool. That whole week, like you couldn't tell me anything. I was like, I didn't give a shit about what people were talking about. I was like, just, oh yeah, cool. Can I, I'm just going to sneak into the bathroom and like check my, <laughs> right. my stats right now. That's the theme of your videos too, is like the system on so, like the auto industry with roads, like that video is incredible. And it's all about how the reason that we don't have so much public transportation as other countries is because like GM went in there and basically like got mixed in with the government. And now it's we have secretary of state, you know, right. It's crazy. Yeah. So now it's like, we prioritize roads and cars when other countries prioritize public transit and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, you, you always kind of like take apart the system from the top down and and it's just it's done so well and so what's the what's the future of that look like are you i mean are you like full steam ahead with climate town or yeah yeah i mean there's just a million all right there's a million topics exactly like every topic that i've tried to cover already and it's just a matter of kind of trying to pick the best ones and then crank through them you know yeah. it sucks to to think about but there's just so much to say mm -hmm. and so i i i mean that's kind of the future there i just have a yeah. giant backlog of stuff i'm also trying to potentially pitch it as a show i'm like doing a little pitch right now but i try not to talk about it too much in case it doesn't happen and i don't have to right like, call <laughs> people and be like don't never mind it didn't happen yeah um yeah so that's not gonna happen so don't worry about that until it does happen which it fucking totally will. <laughs> so um, I saw in an interview that that was your kind of, I don't know if that's still your end goal, but is to, is to have kind of a late night talk show or kind of like a daily yeah. show or, you know, John Oliver type of show about climate change with comedy. Yeah, I would love to. I think it's, I mean, that's kind of, I, I think this has been a little bit of a pattern in, in the way uh, a lot of stuff gets done it just like you just start doing a shitty version of it and then either you quit or you 
get a little bit better or right. you stay shitty, which hopefully that doesn't happen. That's, that's like worse than quitting. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I'm just like trying to, I'm trying to like make a shitty version of it and hopefully it'll get, somebody will be like, you know what? I have forty thousand dollars. Here you go. <laughs> right. Make it make it right. not shitty, dude. It's like yeah. it's embarrassing for you. Here's forty thousand dollars <laughs> to stop embarrassing yourself. Well, I wouldn't say that. I was talking to you a little bit about this before we started recording, but like I, I said that you are just scratching the surface. Like if you had a budget, and I think like with that auto and I mean you just had like one guy filming you, right? Like a yeah. one camera. Yeah. And like if you had a crew and a budget. And all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's it's like a Netflix show. Like like that's the next step. So even if this next process doesn't work out, it's you're gonna have a show one day. You're gonna Thanks, I, I man. Yeah. Or maybe it would be worse with a budget. You know, you never know. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you get tied that's up. That's the with, problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get tied up with producers that are like secretly a part of the oil industry, <laughs> and they just wow, try to you hijack your whole thing. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope I get a show and it and it goes great. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Well, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you definitely deserve it, and the the work oh, that you put thanks. into it. You know that Greenpeace, the hidden camera thing I'm that do, they do. I'm doing it. I'm doing a video on it yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, I heard that you. So that's coming out tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but oh, it'll it'll oh, get right. it's getting shot in the next couple of days. Yeah. So I saw that, and then I thought to myself, I should do a video about that. And then I heard in your podcast, I, I, was it your no no no? It was your Willie Nelson FedEx video you said that you were going to be doing a video about this next. And I went, okay, never mind. Oh, no, <laughs> I no, was no. Like, I, I was like, Raleigh, I was like, Raleigh will do it as good as anybody could do it. So I'll just focus on some other stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, there's lots of teams that play baseball. Well, you know? right, right. And there's I mean, lots of sports in the Olympics. I say, give it a, give it a crack. Well, you know, maybe true. maybe I'll do the I'll do the synchronized diving and you'll be the track and field of it. <laughs> right. You'd be yeah. the shot put. You'd be the javelin. The shot put. I definitely have got a shot putter's body. Uh I'm just kidding. I do not. one really strong arm. <laughs> yeah. Like that uh crappy M well, that's a little redundant. I was gonna say that crappy M Night Shyamalan movie with the lady in the water. Have you seen that? I never saw that. Well, you know, I don't miss that one. Don't watch it. No, I'm, no, no. You, I, I think I got to watch it now. <laughs> well, there's one character that all he does is lift weights with one arm and not the other. Hmm. And I, if I remember right, they don't explain it at all. So he has one super jacked arm and one that's not. And it's, it, it's just another attack in the board of why I, I can't stand M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> but that's Damn. just my opinion. That's, that's just funny. I don't I wonder why they did that. I have no, there was no explanation. Like nothing in the movie. It's just so stupid. It's probably his fifth worst movie, which is saying a lot. He's got a lot of movies where the premise is nature turns on humanity. So yeah. I should I should uh, appreciate that. About well, that's it, yeah, I'm frustrated because I'm like, you know, there's something there. But yeah. then then it's just he he shimalons it he shamalons it yeah. um yeah i mean i don't know how to pronounce the last name Shim sometimes when people are like yeah the himalayas and it's like yeah the Himalayas. is that what you're talking about <laughs> where somebody will like actually know the real way to pronounce it and then they'll hit you with it right after you say it right that's not me doing it that way that's not that's not how although i do think it is himalayas i think you're supposed to say himalayas. is it really I think so my friend travis my other friend travis my old old Travis. Old Travis. Yeah. Who is probably a little younger than you, but still. <laughs> old Travis uh told me that one time in his uh philosophy class. His okay. philosophy teacher told him that. How old are you, by the way? Like I get the vibe that we're right around the same age, but I don't I'm 30. Let's say it, let's say it on the count of three. Oh, I just ruined it. One, Ready? One, two, three. 33. 33. You're no, 33 33 too? Three. Yeah. Nice. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Age. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you gotta, you gotta do three. Yeah. Three, three. Throw those threes up, baby. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Father, son, holy shit. I'm 33, <laughs> bitch. Yeah. So uh as you can tell, I'm a seasoned interviewer. So well, we're having a good time though. Right. Like right. The mark of a good interview is that like both people are like, what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> right. Reddit, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Let's talk about uh your podcast. So I sure, listened to both sure. episodes. Sweatpants, a low-key climate podcast by Raleigh Williams both episodes and on the second you've only got two out we went straight the second, to the top <laughs> right, on the second ever episode you interviewed nasa's freaking senior climate director to the president yeah how, like how do you get that get 
You know, what he I mean? is. I he's a friend of mine. Okay. Well, yeah. There you go. So I had him on the I had him on the talk show back in October oh. of 2018. Oh, an, an inconvenient talk show. Okay, that's right. Okay, he was gotcha. on that show, and then he also is is a Columbia associated. I don't okay. know. I don't know if he like works. I, I'm not exactly sure what it is. What was he doing before he was called up by the Biden administration? He was just a regular old climate scientist for NASA. Just a you know? nerd. One of those humdrum, no frills <laughs> climate scientists for fucking NASA. <laughs> Your typical director of the NASA Goddard Institute. But that, I mean, that was still, it was awesome. And I learned about his juggling prowess throughout oh, yeah. the podcast. But yeah, the premise of your podcast too is also great because like you said in your podcast, climate is such a high key issue and I myself fall into that trap. I try to be funny about it and stuff, but then I get tuned up and I get a little high key with it, but yeah. it's nice to listen to just like a low key version of uh, like you, like it's just a chat basically in your podcast and yeah. uh, you'll it's touch on this. Climate. Yeah. This is a, an episode of my podcast. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm going to wake up and it's, yeah, like the it's a bonus episode. episode. Yeah. <laughs> There's almost no other way to talk about it. You can only scream at the top of your lungs for so long. You know what I mean? Before you start introducing comedy and you start because comedy is such a great communicator or you start talking about it in kind of a more of a low key manner like you are it's more consumable that way you know what i mean and then it gets you to care more i mean i i hope that's that's certainly the premise i don't know if it's uh if the the evidence bears it out but i'm certainly hoping that oh there's a can you hear that there's a little plane no um don't cut this out i want people to know that okay. i was kicked in the head by a mule We'll just stare at each oh, other. Yeah, I, I hope that uh, uh, the idea about addressing a, a pretty serious topic with some levity ha it actually gets people to understand the nuance of it a little better. Right. I know that it's much easier to listen to shit that doesn't feel browbeady, at yeah. least for me. You know, like if, if someone honks at me while I'm driving, I'm not going to then be like, oh, what was what were you concerned <laughs> right. about? You know, right, right. But also, yeah, it's just like how much great comedy is there about like racial politics or right. or actual politics? You know, like George Carlin was so goddamn funny and he was only able to talk about the stuff we talked about because he like didn't hold it too precious to like speak right. about in a way that wasn't deadly serious yeah and i'm not saying i'm george carlin or doing particularly poignant racial comedy because that is <laughs> neither of those two things are at all within my wheelhouse well but, he's one of the greatest stand-ups of all time if not if not the greatest you know yeah yeah i mean he he he's um uh, unreal you know and i just i just want to like you know again a shitty version of a thing that i like i'm just gonna try to do that until i get better or until you quit. get money behind yeah. it yeah yeah, yeah. that's so like i mean you paid, can only do so, baby yeah you can only do so much without a budget you know what i mean and i don't know i've always sort of had this feeling that you could never take away someone's experiences but you can always go broke you know yeah like i i, I had this horrible vision of a of a parallel universe version of me that went into like business school and worked and worked and didn't go on any like trips or anything and then the market crashed and i lost everything right. and like i would be in the same place either way and this way like i got to go to columbia you know yeah. so if you were to would you recommend that to people going to college if they care if if they want to make climate change a part of their life at e either as a career you know what i mean as an adult would you recommend that somebody go to get that degree yeah i mean look if you're self-motivated i don't think you need grad school if you okay. if you're like capable of of like doing like going and looking at like everything that i studied i could like here's here's like a this is from grad school you know, like I didn't have to prove to Amazon. Actually, I bought this in an actual bookstore, but I, I did buy a book on Amazon. So I'm not a fucking hero or anything, but I didn't have to <laughs> prove to them that I was going to grad school in order for them to give me that book. Yeah, right. You know, like you could do it. You could absolutely do it. For me personally, I know that I just can't, I don't have that kind of motivation to like go out and 
seek the knowledge just for the sake of knowledge. I need to put my own money on the line okay. and then have, you know, and then, and then if I don't do the reading, I've just cheated myself, you know? Gotcha. And that's like fucked up. You never want to, you never want to do that to yourself. And so I think that's right. like giving it stakes. Similarly, every morning at 9 a.m., I have a personal assistant who lives in the Philippines and she calls me and we just zoom for an hour. And I talk about, I tell her like, okay, here are the, the things I want to get done today. And then I start working on them. And then she just watches me. <laughs> and sometimes I'll have stuff like I need research done. So she does some like, she'll, she'll do like, oh yeah, here's, this is the best kind of dumpster to, to order when you're okay. doing renovations or something. But like, I just know that if I didn't have money on the line, if I didn't have like something on the line, I wouldn't wake up in time for that yeah. call every morning. And I'm sure with what you're doing too, I mean, it gives you that extra credibility, you know what I mean? And then you can have that as part of your accolades and, you know, it opens more doors and everything too. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's, that is an, an amazing thing that now I can like kind of, I just, it, it, it's unearned for sure. Like you, anyone could go and get a degree from any institution. If you had the money and like the stick to itiveness or a tutor or whatever, you know, like you could go and get a degree from basically anywhere. And then when someone is like, Hey, I have a degree from this place. You immediately think like, Oh, they must be an expert at this. Those two things are basically uncorrelated, you know? Right. Like, I think you, I, I genuinely think there is like very little overlap between whether someone actually knows their shit and whether they have a degree from a place, the the implication, I guess, is okay. that this person is an expert, right? And yeah, right. that implication is actually worthwhile because it drops a couple of the the, the barriers that go up when you hear somebody talking some shit. I mean, yeah. I know it, if somebody, I'm like watching TikTok and someone's like, the healthcare industry is broken because of these things, and I'm like, okay, buddy, like, <laughs> what did you Google that? <laughs> right. But if yeah. they're like wearing a fucking doctor's robe, robe yeah, smock. No, wait. It's not, it's not smock. Doctor's not smock. jacket, doctor outfit, doctor coat. Why can't I think of lab the... coat? It's a lab coat. There you go. Doctor's coat. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then you kind of give them a little. It's it's like basically having a lab coat. I happened right. to actually now know all the material really well. Mm -hmm. So that if for like in in the case of somebody who's like really like trying to engage with the material then yes, they are going to be pretty well informed, but I don't think it's like, it's not a, a, a gimme. It's not a yeah. layup. Were you surprised by a lot of stuff uh, through college? Like the things that you learned? Because I mean, I was, I would assume that you were pretty well educated as much as you could be, you know, without going through like a university about it. But then whenever you were going through it, were you kind of surprised by some of the stuff that you learned? Yeah, absolutely. There were two particular classes that blew me the fuck away. And one was like, one was a class from the Columbia Law School taught by Professor Michael Gerard, who's like the senior lawyer for Columbia or something, the, mm. the Sabin Institute. The, mother, the motherfucker is a king. I love that guy. <laughs> Michael Gerard, shout out Michael Gerard. If he ever says anything, listen to it. That dude is a okay. genius. So gotcha. he teaches, uh, he teaches um, climate change law and climate change policy and energy regulatory policy. And I took both those okay. classes. And those were out of control. Like, for instance, yeah. did you know that the words climate change do not appear in any federal law? I did not know that. Yeah, you know. it's it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. What are, so what are they what do they label it as instead? Nothing. There's Nothing. no there's not it's it's not a thing that is regulated. Okay. The Clean Air Act that was passed in like the set in 1970 70. or something. That is the the only reason why you can kind of apply climate policy to that is because mass versus epa in 2008 i think got co2 classified as an emission hmm. as a pollutant okay. which a fucking course it is right <laughs> but yeah so like that's and and okay. that is what 
almost like mass versus EPA is is the thing that allows climate policy to even come close to being enforced in America. Did it make you more optimistic or more pessimistic? No. Pessimistic. More pessimistic. I, well, I, would imagine, yeah. I mean, more realistic. I just, right. I just, I, I feel like here's, and also uh, the energy system was an unbelievable class. Travis Bradford is a fucking mensch. He's like an unbelievable professor. So funny. Love that guy. Um, but he, yeah, he wrote a book about the energy system. And that was a big understanding to like, hey, do you know how like, coal turns a light on in your house okay yeah oh, like, and i was like kind of no you know like yeah. wh- how does it what does it do how do you like what are the regulation bodies so that was pretty mind-blowing but because i like you know all this context allowed me to to just get a better handle on like what's going on how fast are things moving what could change to make things move um yeah so i would say uh, optimistic is probably not the right word and pessimistic is not the right word it's like what's what's likely to happen and when and i would say that probably until rich people really feel threatened by it by climate change more threatened by climate change than they do by not being rich nothing will happen until right. the, until that shift happens i don't think a lot will change yeah yeah i wondered about that i mean i figured that the answer was you know either pessimistic or more realistic like what you were saying i can't imagine going learning more deeply about the issue and then being like everything's fine <laughs> you know yeah i mean uh yeah i mean you you don't even have to guess like yeah. how many countries are there 200 the holy sea is also a country really yeah is that in israel or what? i don't know what it is i just remember one of my classes one of the professors mentioned that was a, a country that like rat, ratified some climate policy Okay. And I was like, that's weird. You'd think they'd they'd be into sea level rise. <laughs> right. And then everyone just went like this. <laughs> but there's a ton of countries. Place. Yeah. America <laughs> and Australia that's are the it. only like developed countries that have a major political party that denies the science of climate change. Yeah. And they barely even like either one do- like it's potentially 10% of America who like denies climate change is happening, but there's, you know, whatever, but there's 190 plus to potentially even 200 countries. A lot of them like super hyper developed countries that believe climate change is a thing and are not decarbonizing. So yeah. like, what the fuck are we doing? You know, before I started this whole thing, that was like a nightly conversation I was having with my wife, I felt bad because I was just always like, why aren't we doing what we need to do? You know what I mean? I was like, the answers are there. Just decarbonize, just use renewable energy, just like put, get a clean energy system going. And it's like, the, it's like the answer's right there, but there are just these, there are, there are always people in the way, you know, whether it's the oil companies or whatever, the money, rich people just in general, a lot of times, yeah. not always, but. We're just like to default to the status quo, you know? Yeah. Like it's so easy to not, change it it takes fucking a ton of work yeah to recreate a system yeah and it's just so much easier not to do it and if people aren't focused on it it'll never get done yeah i was having a conversation with my neighbor's dad who's also or my my parents neighbor and he's he's an engineer who's like a real climate skeptic Mm. and it was while there were those uh, that heat wave in the Pacific Northwest. And I was like, well, what, how do you explain that? He's like, oh, that's a fluke. Then I asked him how many extreme weather events have to happen before you'll consider that as being climate change driven. And it was, it was like he had never even considered the question before Okay. because of course he didn't because you know, everything is confirmation bias and he's just like, I don't know. Yeah. It's like hundreds of flukes a year. There's a, no, it's another fluke. It's another yeah. fluke. Yeah. It's think, another fluke. Yeah. Right. It was a one in, it was either one in 500, I think it was a one in 500,000 chance based off the climate models that that heat wave would have happened without, you know, man made climate change. 
And it's like, yeah, it's not that. that was, hard. Are, are you citing that episode of the Daily from a couple of weeks ago? I don't know if I got it from there or not. Do you listen to the Daily? I do. Yeah, dude, not, the Daily not fucking daily, rules. But I love the. Oh shit! Not daily. You listen to the Daily Weekly. Right, right. I used to listen to that more daily, and then I cut like during the pandemic. Uh, I was kind of like, I gotta, I gotta take a break from, yeah. you know what I mean? This is, yeah, this is addictive. Yeah. I yeah. gotta take a break from like all the, just too much, like, it, yeah. Um, but yeah, I need to get all back COVID, man. It was the COVID talk. Show. It was all, all COVID and all Trump. And it, it was just, I was like, man, I need a break. Uh, this for remember a when there was COVID and Trump? <laughs> right. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you what, the billiards community, which I don't know if we've said this on mic yet, but I'm big into the billiards community. Yes. Yeah. And the billiards community is heavily Republican. So that is, it is nice sometimes to like, get to have a conversation with somebody who's, a real skeptic but sort of likes me a little bit already yeah because they like the videos that i do so it's kind of a nice it's a nice little point of entry to i was gonna say do they get the world i i don't know why but i could have guessed that it was heavily kind of republican you yeah, know well how do you you know if i told you to picture a bar in a tennessee bar. right you're thinking of an establishing shot of a pool table and then yeah. like a guy who looks like fucking Sam Elliott. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's not... man, I remember when I used to break balls like that. <laughs> it's not. Well, who are you? My wife is billiards kind of taking a little bit of a backseat or is it still, is it more like a, what you do on your free time? Like for fun? Yeah. I mean like yesterday all day I edited a billiards video. Okay. Yeah. So I still do that. Um, it's hard during the pandemic for sure. Right. Yeah. So that that kind of sidelined it a little bit. But yeah, I, if climate change wasn't a thing, I would get to do billiards all the time. Yeah. You know, it would be amazing. I'm, right now, I'm resentful to climate change for, among other things, keeping me from my favorite hobby. That's why you're doing this whole thing. You're trying That's right. to solve this particular video right here. <laughs> I need to get back to billiards. I'm solving yeah. the climate crisis. By doing yeah. It. Yeah. So like that's a, it was a little bit of a bummer, but I'm still still chugging along. I'm playing in the U.S. Open this year. Oh, wow. So that's gonna be fun. When is when and where is that? Middle of September. It's in uh, New Jersey. Oh, cool. Uh, not yeah. too far of a trip for you. Where are you in New York, by the way? Are you in New in York Brooklyn. City? I'm Brooklyn? in Brooklyn. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, how is it? That, like, I have visited New York. You know, I loved it. I've been there twice. It was amazing. But like, what's it like living in New York? I live in st louis so it's like a really small city but you know what's it like it's nice you know it's like uh it's got a, a certain emphasis on public transportation which i really yeah. appreciate um it's pretty goddamn unbearably hot a lot of the summer although today is seasonably livable which i like a couple of weeks ago we had like actually last week the forest fires in on the west coast we had like smoke from oh, really? those forest fires blotting out the sun it was like yeah, God damn. yeah. it was like the movie the mummy when right. those locusts burned through i uh my wife and i were uh we're like photographers too so we were photographing a wedding and on the way back home from up by chicago the moon i didn't know that this was happening yet i saw the moon get more and more red mm. as the trip went on and i was like the moon is literally blood red. And I, I started Googling it and I was like, is there like some kind of an eclipse right now or something? And I didn't see anything about it and I couldn't get over it. I was like, the moon just doesn't turn red. Like what the hell is going on? And then I think it was like two days later, I saw an article that said that it was from the wildfires that was making it turn red. And I was like, oh yeah, this isn't apocalyptic or anything, uh -huh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it's an eclipse of our common sense, I guess. What's ahead for you now that, you know, that you've graduated are you just putting all of your focus on climate town and your podcast and trying to, you know, you said you're trying to get a show going and yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I sort of have, you know, a couple different, uh, uh, you know, I'm focused on, excuse me, uh, a little bit of billiards, a little bit of climate change, like kind of trying to forward both those projects at the same time. Okay. It's kind of a, you know, I think, living living in general takes up a lot of energy you got to go to the doctor you got to buy right. groceries you know like i think it and it's easy to let that lapse 
So you got to keep carrier health, I guess. Yeah. So my goal is to just kind of do both, like really, really focus on process and, and get more videos out for both, uh, both YouTube channels. And then, yeah. yeah, you know, like I've been getting some green lights in, in for climate town and I want to keep trying to hit those green lights. Yeah. So yeah. this is going to turn into, I don't know, like an HBO show one day or like a Netflix Ooh. show. It's just like right there. Cause I mean, you put so much effort and like we hit, like you and I have totally different styles and that's great. Mine's more just, I do like more just quick on the fly, random stuff. Like I'm going to be transitioning into like a vlog and having climate as like the constant theme as opposed to making like these and then you do the opposite in such an awesome way of like these hard do one like, video a year <laughs> one, one, right you put out like i don't know like every four weeks or so you do a video on average maybe every three or four weeks and they're but the thing is they're like Probably six weeks sorry six sorry. weeks six yeah. weeks but the thing is like they're so impactful that you watch one and then you're just like damn and then you're you're waiting for the next one to pop up you know what i mean like you're excited about it so so yeah keep at it and uh it's been great chatting with you like it, it's really been great i felt like i knew you a little bit through our videos like we've chatted back and forth a tiny bit like on our on just on comments on youtubes and on, on youtubes and instagram but and the uh YouTubes. <laughs> one question i wanted to leave you with is it, it just it irks me so much when people just straight up lean into the doomism aspect you know what i mean as it's like we're all fucked and it's like yeah i mean it's bad but you can't just say we're all fucked and then not do anything about it so like there's there are those people and then there are people that there are like a lot of you know 13 14 year olds that are starting to you know transition out of childhood and they're starting to think man, this climate thing, you know, it sounds terrifying. Like, am I going to be able to grow up, you know, have a full life and all this kind of stuff? So what would you say to people that are, especially younger people that are scared about the climate crisis? And is there any way to inject optimism given such a, you know, tidal force of what climate change is? I think it's kind of similar to if when World War II was happening, the government wasn't organizing any yeah. soldiers to go fight the Nazis. If you're 13, you're watching this. Thank you yeah. for tuning in. And you hold the keys to the future, you know? Like, the, uh, not to be a, a shitty song from a fucking Live Aid <laughs> uh, throwback, but, like, the way you interact with technology is, you know poetic and mm -hmm. and better than any digital uh you know like 30 year old is doing right now so you hold a lot of power in that way and revolutions are born out of communication so yeah get cracking i guess yes. and, and sorry we fucked everything up like this is the reality of it it's really bad but we have no option to just sit back and be doomist about it we have to be optimistic and we have to talk about it with levity and you know, move forward with that because that's how shit gets done. And, and I think Gen Z will respond really well to that too. Like you were saying, like the fact that they're like, they're so good with technology and stuff. I mean, they have so much agency now to, to be able to, if they really care about the issue to, you know, start a YouTube channel or, you know, even if, even if they don't make it their career, you can still just by talking about it with other people is just, is a start, you know? Yeah, I agree. And, so, and that's like a big piece of it is you got to like have the conversation. Yeah. It shouldn't, it's like, it's always this weird, awkward, like if you bring up climate change, especially, I mean, I'm from rural Illinois, you know what I mean? And it's like, you can't even talk about it without people being like, oh, yeah. And then like saying some kind of conspiracy theory. But like it needs to be almost forced in a low key way. It just needs to be more normalized to talk about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Imagine if like we had the same issues with racial politics or income inequality. If yeah. like it was it was like lame to want to talk about <laughs> like right. like the yeah. Black Lives Matter movement or something. You yeah. know, it's like fucking what? Yeah, it's yeah. it's but it is different because it's like it doesn't 
I don't know. It's it's a slow moving, all encompassing universal problem, and the, and our brains just developed to deal with like lions attacking us, and not yeah, not like invisible slow <laughs> problems. I, I read a, I think it was a New York Times article about that exact thing about how our brains like we're terrible about thinking about the future. Like yeah, I mean people smoke cigarettes all that. Like look at yeah, that, people right. fucking do heroin. <laughs> right yeah it's it's crazy like you know it'll be bad yeah people get in fights at bars yeah. like if, yeah. if you ask that fucking person like do you think that there can be any good that comes of this <laughs> it's always no but that, like we have a bar fight every fucking night because we don't know how to plan yeah and that's with just you yourself that's not even thinking about other people you know what i mean like if you smoke cigarettes that's like on you but that like, and if someone can't care enough to make that change for themselves, then they're not going to care about making that change for other people. So hopefully, like the more that we can talk about it in this type of a way, the younger generations will, you know, be much more apt than how we are dealing with it. or, you know, the boomers or whatever. Okay, boomer, but <laughs> whoever. But uh, anyway, I've taken up too much of your time. So oh, hardly. Thank you so much for doing this. It was great meeting you. And yeah, uh, you too. Yeah. So sorry, I keep stepping over your whole outro. Hit, hit me with the outro again, and I won't. I won't uh, interrupt you. Well, no, you did the intro, the interruption on the intro, and I think that made that. So you have to interrupt the entire outro. Too. Have to interrupt this part right here. <laughs> yeah. Check out Climate Town, his YouTube channel. Uh, check out his podcast, Sweatpants Low Key Climate Podcast. Everything else he's doing, he's on Instagram at Climate Town. Thanks again, Raleigh. I really appreciate it. And, you know, have a great day and keep doing what you're doing. Right back at you. Happy to be a part of it, Travis. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. All right. See you later.